Hank Johnson for Project Lycaeum and Dave Morrow and Project Essex. Hi Hank, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, we have a list of questions for you. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. The first question that we have is, um, why are you in Chicago? What brought you here today? Um, well, I am here because Dr. Ezekiel Calvin is here. Um, and he wanted to have a meeting to talk to me. So I um, kind of went against my better judgment of coming from uh, somewhat a state of hiding from Nemesis and what's going on right now and trying to figure out, you know, what is the safest means to stay alive and protect my friends. Um, but this meeting with Calvin seems very important. So that's why I'm here, primarily. Okay. Um did you encounter Nemesis at Colon? Um, I did not encounter Nemesis directly in Colon. I did um, see some of their lackeys. They, um, the TKO operatives were there with um, uh, glasses, some Oolong Tech glasses that uh, seemed to be affecting uh, the TKO operatives in, in a way in which um, seemed like they were losing control of their own bodies. Um, the glasses started sparking and interacting with them in, in a way in which uh, created some dangerous situations for uh, Prime Hank, 1218 Hank, <laughs> um, Jahan, uh, Clue, Wendy, Clendy, and uh, the Enlightened and Resistance agents there. So it was. Uh, what do you think that they're up to with this, all this disruptive attack? Nemesis in general? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. The more I, I've been trying to do as much research as I can on Nemesis, and I just keep hitting dead ends every time. Um, seems like there is uh, never-ending dead ends <laughs> of information. Um, but I, I feel like they are not stopping at anything to get what they want. Um, and it's a little scary as we don't know what it is exactly that they want. Um, so when you're seeing people like all the relented wolf, you know, ending himself and uh, Carrie and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 um, it's serious, and they're also you know threatening agents, and that's not okay. Do you so, feel like they're coming for you? Uh, yeah, I would come for me. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm <laughs> I'm I, I'm part of a, a, a the researcher Magnus, and I'm an XM sensitive. Um, I am, uh, yeah. I think that I would. It sounds like uh, I would be next in line, or at least um, a target. Um, so I'm just trying to be prepared for that, and asking all the agents to to keep your eyes open and. Not just watching my back, but watching each other's, because that's one thing that you can't watch is your own back. So it's helpful to know that regardless of faction, that we are um, looking out for each other. So we have a question. Um, are you still a simulacrum or have you been made human again? Uh, yes, I'm still a simulacrum. Um, you know, one of one of the um, kind of not oldest in time, but oldest out of the XM the researcher Magnus um, from Niantic. So, uh, yeah, that's partially why um, why Calvin is here and what he what he wanted to talk about, why he wanted um, a recursion artifact for me, um, and uh, yeah. So, Sorry, I um, it's just been uh, yeah with Nemesis. Um, stopping recursion, it's just kind of uh, affected me mentally. I just feel like I'm in a weird headspace every once in a while. Sorry about that. That's fine. That's fine. Who were your most trusted and untrusted colleagues in the Niantic project? Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty easy one. I would say most trusted would have been Devra. Um, we have the longest history that predates some of. Um, you know, even my experience with uh, the Niantic project, I've known her for a long time. Um, Calvin as well, I've known, I mean, he was as early back as um, supporting some of my research or early research in, uh, in school on the uh, 13 Magnus and, and that kind of research he was supporting. And, um, and he, 
he withheld a lot of information from us at uh, the Niantic project, and there's some of his actions that I'm still uh, trying to parse my way through about how I feel about them. But I wouldn't put him in my least trusted category. I think that would go to uh, Oliver Linton Wolf. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that guy, I, uh, I mean, I guess rest in peace and, and, and some rest in pieces or shards or something. I'm not exactly sure, but. Uh, uh, you can always trust him to get the most recent XM tech out, but um, exposing um, people to high levels of XM without consent or knowledge is uh, not something that sits right with me. That that um, that kind of knowledge that you gain from that is too high of a risk. Uh, so, yeah, part of the reason why I'm a part of the resistance as of right now. Okay. Hank twelve eighteen seems to have a relation with Calvin twenty Calvin twelve eighteen. Mm -hmm. Have you been with Calvin Prime since before the Niantic project? Um, yeah, he um, what I've what I've seen from um, meeting Hank from the twelve eighteen universe finally uh, was that our lives seem to be parallel in a lot of ways. A lot of experiences um, that have happened for me, um, maybe some some differences in how things were handled maybe from because we are while well, we are the same we are also different <laughs> um so yeah so calvin and i um have a similar relation as um uh hank and and um the 12 and 18 universe although um from 1218's point of view of calvin and his universe and, and calvin and mine i think that um our calvin's might be slightly different it seems um, that Calvin in this prime universe, as far as I know, has good intentions. Um, so, so yeah. Okay. Um, how do you feel about the NIA under Calvin's lead? Do you feel he is trustworthy? <sighs> it's it's a tough time, and and trust trust for me is is um, something that is um, you have to be proven to be trustworthy and some of his actions in the past have proven him to be possibly untrustworthy at least um dr calvin is known to be less than forthcoming about the information that he knows so i kind of take um my relationship uh with calvin as um you know keeping him at a safe distance and assuming that he knows more than he's telling me um and just trying to be one step ahead of that as well of Understanding what the the full picture of what it is that we're looking at. Okay. Um, what do you know about Ezekiel Calvin's purpose in setting up the Niantic project? From your understanding, what does Calvin want to do when he asked Lightman to work on the methodology hacking the reborn location of a simulacrum? Hmm. With the potential of XM, do you think the location can be a combination of coordination and time? Ooh, um, that's a doozy. <laughs> uh, I think that, um, again, I, I, I have a, a sense that uh, Calvin has good intentions and he is, I think that he is trying to find the safest place for all of the simulacras to be held. Um, I have a pretty good idea of where I think that that might be. Um, and um, I'm not exactly sure um, what what his next steps are. Or what I have, I've been a little bit removed from the Niantic project um, um, in the most recent year, just dealing with my own recursion and uh, <laughs> and trying to get the Osiris Stone. And uh, um, yeah, so I I, th I think it has something to do with. Um, hopefully in, in some way protecting these researchers because I think this research of Magnus is important and that we're doing um, you know important work for humankind and I assume that uh, Dr. Calvin and the NIA has that in their best interest as well okay Deborah Deborah wish you and Jahan happy during Date Morrow's interview at Nuremberg how do you feel about Deborah? And what happened during your time at Arecibo? <laughs> uh, 
This sounds like a People Magazine interview question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first and foremost, I will start by saying that uh, Deborah and I's um, personal relationship is something that I would, I and she would probably respect, not uh, you know exposing exactly what happened in Arecibo, but uh, um, we have been close for a long time, and our I care for her a lot, and we have um, similar but slightly opposing um, views on certain things. Um, and uh, we have been sometimes closer than others and sometimes more further apart. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm not entirely sure about the question about Jahan. I don't know if that is, um, if Deborah was thinking that Jahan and I were, I don't know if you've seen any of the Dunraven episodes, but Jahan and I don't get along very well. <laughs> she's not very nice to me. No, uh, she's great, um, but uh, yeah. Deborah, Deborah, Deborah. Yeah, I just, I mean, mainly I just, I, uh, uh, I just want her to be safe. Deborah, if you're watching this, be careful. Um, yeah, because I think we're all in danger and I, you know, I think she's rightfully so, um, uh, kind of underground at the, at the, at the moment. And I had to go against my better judgment to come out of somewhat of hiding to kind of have this meeting with Calvin. So be careful. Jarvis made the comment that he has a plan to get you back to his rightful enlightened path in Tokyo. Mm. Do you subscribe to his point of view? Um, he's a little too handsy for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> Jarvis, I, 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 I really don't think that, um, that Jarvis is going to be uh, the one to change my faction alignment. Uh, the part of, part of the reason for my faction change was because of... Um, the resistance is help in uh, recursion cycle, um, and uh, and also my belief in um, I'm a researcher, I'm an explorer, I'm an archaeologist, and to to resist the possibility that um, either the shapers or Nazir could be here to help society in some kind, um, possibly. I think all possibilities exist, so we're not entirely sure. I mean, that's uh, my job as a scientist is, is to keep questioning things. That's why science is my favorite religion, because you have to keep going back to it and re-questioning and re-hypothesizing what things are in the search for truth. And things change. Gravity was discovered at some point or understood at some point by humanity. Before that, they couldn't explain it. So whether the shapers, you know, I mean, the, the enlightened are supporting the um, the idea of shapers and the enlightenment of humankind or the resistance are uh you know traditionally resisting all exogenous beings but what if what if the nazir aren't what you think they are i think it's it's interesting to question so i, I might even be aligned more on the side of resistance pro nazir but open to the idea of pro any exogenous or none <laughs> well, we're not sure yet I think that's stuff that we're still researching and and uh, working on. How did it feel when you met your twelve eighteen counterpart? Uh, well, at first it was um, it's a little strange. <laughs> kind of was like um, I, it's like you always imagine meeting your soulmate being some beautiful. <laughs> person, woman, <laughs> and uh, my soulmate turns out to be me from another dimension. <laughs> um, and also we were, uh, we met in Kolan and we were, um, we were uh, initially on opposing sides and to, to be brought together and to team up against Nemesis and the TKO was something that was completely unexpected um, and totally awesome. I mean, I have... People have um, agents from since I have recursed have told me about 1218 Hank and, um, and the universe that he's from and who he was. And it was nice to finally meet the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Hank Johnson, uh, <laughs> 1218 Hank. And uh, it was great. He's, um, I couldn't have, we would not have made it out of Kolan alive without him. Okay. Um, and we have this, uh, <laughs> 
I guess you could call it chemistry, uh, <laughs> finish each other's sentences. Uh, it's it's a weird thing, but um, do you both like the same kind of pizza? Yeah, yeah, and we're both uh, we're both um, cilantro tastes like soap to both of us, so it's uh, <laughs> uh, that's kind of one of those things. It's like, all right, so how does this exactly work? I've, you know, these are, these are again, these are things that you can think about or hypothesize, but what does it actually mean? You know, with him being in my universe, how does that affect his? Is there a mirror of me that's in his universe replacing his, uh, you know, or our, our, is our DNA, you know, down to the strand? I mean, he's can't be because he's, you know, taller than me, but. <laughs> <laughs> And then maybe did he did he age in his in his travel? Is is are these dimensions uh, and universes you know operating on separate time structures? I'm, I'm not entirely I think sure. They are yeah, it must. And be. I understand that Prime is running slightly faster than 2018. Right. So yeah, well, that makes sense. I think I could. <laughs> so okay, I could. so about your plans on what you'll pursue moving forward? Any words that you want to speak to the agents? Um, yes. Um, let's see. Yeah, first, first of all, to all agents, um, in both enlightened and resistance, um, now is a time that we need to come together as much as possible. This is a, a, a strange thing to be saying, and the right before an anomaly happens <laughs> as the two sides will be warring against each other. Um, but just to remember that we're all here for the same reason. We're all humans. We are all looking out for humankind and what we believe is our best interest for the world. Um, so I just, I just think it's in a really important time with nemesis around um, to remember basic human kindness, <laughs> looking out for each other. And finding ways in which our opposing views can uplift humanity and each other. Um, I also want to do a huge shout out to Operation Essex and uh, uh, how do you pronounce it? Uh, like like Project Lycaeum. Project Lycaeum as well um, for all your hard work and um, allowing me to be part of that community. Um, a big, a big, huge thank you to Centaur Squad and Team Hikiaku uh, for their help in Kolan. Um, we couldn't have done it without them, and they were brave, braver than anything I've ever seen. Uh, and um, yeah, with with that in mind, I just think we have a possibility with the Osiris Stone, um, with the power that it, it could hold to. Um, become some kind of a, a beacon for exogenous entities or beings or energy that we have some interesting times ahead of us. So strap on your seatbelts and, and get ready for um, finally possibly seeing what what's out there. Yeah, and thank you again. Thank you for your time. Of course. I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk, speak with me. Yeah. Um, this is Agent Astral Dreamer 1, and we're entering, ending the interview now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>